Hello and welcome to the Two Robbies podcast, your destination for in-depth discussion and analysis of the Premier League and the Champions League. I'm Robbie Musto, he's Robbie Earl, and here are today's topics. Spurs dominate 10-man Arsenal in the North London derby to shake up the top four race. Liverpool take all three points at Villa Park, but Man City respond in resounding fashion again, firing fast five past Wolves, maintain three-point lead and grow their lead in goal difference, and another crucial defeat for Leeds while Everton pick up a point at Watford. That's what we've got coming up in today's episode. Okay, my friend, before we get into the football stuff, uh, make sure NBC Sports predict as part of your match week routine. Play Premier League Pick'em for free for your chance at $50,000 jackpot. Predict the outcomes of Premier League matches correctly and the jackpot is yours. Score big when you download the NBC Sports Predictor app today. Okay, let's talk about today. Let's talk about North London Derby, one of the most highly anticipated games of the season. For decades. For decades between the two clubs in North London. And... It was Spurs that came away with the points. It was Spurs that kept a clean sheet. It's Spurs that closed the gap and put a bit of pressure on Arsenal. Um, let's start off with your overview of the game. Mm. And we can probably go to some of the refereeing, the big decisions in the game <laughs> that obviously had a bearing on the outcome. Yeah, it did. And, and it's, it was disappointing. We mm. were both, well, all of us, I'm sure many people yeah. out there were yeah. so looking forward to this game. And every time I see that red card... I'm automatically disappointed because the game totally changes at that point. 11 against 10. They've got the score of the game at the time. Okay, so back to the first one. And it's the penalty. The penalty yeah. is the first one. Yeah. Now, of course, on the podcast, we've got a little bit more time to talk about mm-hmm. it than we do on, on air. Yeah. Um, when I first saw it live, I think I said, well, didn't see, didn't see much there. Cedric Suarez going in the back of Youngman's son yeah. on the far post. Yeah. Cross comes in. Yeah. You look at it live. Yeah. And you're like, ah, coming together. Mm. Didn't see a lot. Yeah. We first then, thought, actually, it was a handball, didn't it? The yeah, we did. Was, somebody says, somebody so hit it a handball. Hand. And it's like, no. Then we see it's a foul. But turn, he points to the spot, yeah. real close to the yeah. incident. And, of course, we have the benefit of different uh, angles and mm. replays that we yeah. see. And I did, so I described it in, in the halftime. Yeah. And, you know, we have look at it two, three, four, five, six times. Mm-hmm. And I kind of get it that he pointed to the spot, Rob. And yeah. technically... It was a bit of a shove in the back. It was clumsy, yeah. I'd say, from Cedric Suarez. Mm-hmm. But I'll say exactly, I don't feel any differently now than I did when I first saw it a few, after a few replays. I still feel, in other, with other referees, there's plenty of referees that wouldn't have given that wrong. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't say that the, 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 the magnitude of the game, but just the coming together real quick, mm-hmm. colliding, is he seeing him out? Is he a little bit too aggressive? I'd say he's a little aggressive, yeah. but I, I think Arsenal were a little unlucky there mm-hmm. for a referee to say, that's a foul because I think yeah. there's plenty others out there, Rob, that would have let it go. For me, I, again, I looked at it and we had the, the, uh, a few views, a few different looks. I saw it as a 50 50 call. I saw it as a referee could go either way, and, and whichever way he goes, I was kind of okay with. The point mm-hmm. being that when it was given, it was never going to get over to him by VAR because there's enough contact. I, I'm also with you. I thought it was slightly. Less of a penalty than soft. more of a penalty. Could you describe yeah. it as soft? It was soft. It, it was a contact. Young Min Son has made the most of it. And I talked about Spurs after the game being streetwise. That's, being street, that's making yeah. the most of, of getting contact on your back. He made sure the referee saw it. My, 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 my only issue with, with Cedric Suarez is why give the referee that opportunity? Yeah, he had the opportunity, yeah. Why give him that opportunity to make that 50-50 call that goes against your team? Mm. But that doesn't uh, take away from P- Paul Tierney, I thought, probably gave Spurs the benefit of the doubt on that one. And, and it was one of them that, that could have gone either way. But what we do know is from the penalty kick, the Prince is going to score. I mean, he's, he's an incredible record in North London Derby's mm. Incredible record from penalty kicks against uh, an England colleague, yeah. and Aaron Ramsdale, but finds a back in there. So Spurs, 1-0 up. Game's still very much in the balance. Everything's still to play for. It was a, it was a fairly even. Yeah, like. yeah. both sides were, yeah. were quite well set up. They weren't giving too much away. You know, Spurs couldn't quite get on. There was, there was a little bit of slight unrest at Spurs, wasn't they? That they were a little bit deep. And they tried to the play fans. out. It wasn't yeah, doing great. Wasn't... Trying to play out yeah. and make the game, take the game mm. to Arsenal, which they're never really super comfortable doing. No, not at, at this sort of iteration of Conte's team anyway. And then we get to the, the big call, the Rob Holding. So mm. Rob Holding and, and Youngman's son, it started very early in the game, Rob, hadn't it? We, we saw a couple of 
um, issues where the two players have come together. There was one where they sort of wrestling on the floor that they went down, and we'll come back to that. Then there's the one that Holding gets a, a yellow call for because he gets too tight and then a little bit impetuous. And a couple of fouls. There's a couple of fouls before that. Yeah, the, the referee said, Paul Turley didn't he? said, like yeah. that's the second yeah. or third time. Yeah, you, you're getting a yellow. Yeah. And then once he's on a yellow, Hyung Min Sung makes one of those trademark runs from out to in, looking to go central. Eric Dyer, we know, loves to ping that ball. And then some, maybe Spurs, uh, Arsenal fans will say he ran into Rob Holding, but I think we saw enough replays where Rob Holding looks to almost have sort of dug and, and thrown this shoulder and, and yeah. arm at Son. Yeah. I thought that one was a, was an easy second gel. I mean, Lee Dixon said in commentary, because I'm surprised, he said he thought it could have even been a straight red. It was, it was that much mm. uh, contact. So, a little less um, debate on that one. Um, is there any point where, I mean, do we have to question Rob Holding on, in, in this, Rob? The big game. Why hot atmosphere? You talked about before the game, it's a young team, it's a new team starting to develop. How are they going to handle, handle this? The, yeah. the, this? Is that getting to a player like Rob Holding? I mean, sometimes it's ability, Rob, and sometimes it's your maturity and composure in games. Experience, Rob, surprises me. So of all the young players out yeah, there, it's one of yeah. the most experienced mm. defenders out there that got, he got too bothered by... Kyung Min Sun, too yeah. bothered with trying to stop him, trying to be aggressive against him, as if like the words from his coaching team were, you know, you've got to get tight to Sun, yeah. he's yeah. on your side of the field, mm -hmm. he comes inside to Swerik, he's going to be on you, be ready for him. Yeah. He was trying to be super tight, aggressive, you know, and the run across with the arm, I mean, that was just, I, I, I described it as unprofessional, mm -hmm. like particularly mm -hmm. for someone like him, who's an experienced defender, he's been around the club a long time now, there's always been a doubt whether he's really Arsenal quality back there, but we know the the way the squad's been thinned out over recent yeah. months. We know the injury situations. Ben White on the bench wasn't ready to come into the game at any point uh, and wasn't risked later in the match. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's an error from Rob, Rob Holding. It's an error to get that caught into it. And when that red card goes up and they're already uh, trailing in the game, it's like, wow. Like, yeah, so, so you have the clumsiness mm. from Cedric. I think a little unlucky. I think we both agree on mm. that. You have the unprofessional nature of, of Rob Holding there trying to be too aggressive with Son in this massive game. And then you have a set piece where one of the best strikers the Premier League's ever seen is left to wander into the back yeah. post and dip down and score the, the second goal for Spurs, which really at that point puts yeah, the game away. The game in it, 45 minutes, I mean, it's such know. a shame that we're having to start this yeah. game analysis by Referee key moments, decisions, incidents. Yeah. It just shows you, Rob, like we, we spend so much time thinking about tactical matchups yeah. and systems and all that. And particularly in these games, it's so often something else. Mm. It just it just is, isn't it? Whether it's set pieces or, yeah. or decisions or lack of discipline. Mm. Particularly with Arsenal, that's tons yeah. of yet red cards it's, now again. Thirteen for Arteta. now, somebody said for, for Arteta. And is, it, is, that on the, is how much is on the manager? Yeah. How yeah. much is on the manager? It's, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because I felt this Arsenal team had slightly moved on from from that. Granit Xhaka, we saw yeah. seen Pepe. Granit Xhaka is much more in control of himself now, much better professional. You know, today I, I thought was was involved in, in nothing that was, was going to cause a problem. I think Gabriel's calmed down Gab a little bit. Gabriel, he yeah, he's another one who was a bit he of a really hot good. head. He looks really good. He does, you know, and playing well. So, is that just individual error? Is that just somebody getting so up, uptight and so wound up by the, the occasion and what the manager said that he hasn't controlled himself? Because he's actually. It's a, it's a manager. There's very little you can do about that, isn't right. it? So if, let's, if I'm sending you out, well, you're, you're Rob Holding, and, and, and I'm looking at, what, what, can I, what can I do? Maybe from the side after the first one, can I start being like, Rob, Rob, calm down? Is it that? I don't know. Well, if you think back when we were players, right, and, and I think it, it predominantly goes back to what, what you're like as an individual mm. and your professionalism and your mental toughness in, in situations like that. There's been times in games where I'll tell, I, I swear to you, I've wanted to really yeah. hurt yeah. opponents, yeah. right? Yeah. And 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 it's just when you're in the nature of playing at the midfield, and you get physical, but you can't do it. Mm. Yeah, you, I, yeah. I, there was a couple of times I really that you can't do it. So there's a certain amount of personal professionalism to not get sucked into that. But there is a part of the manager's job in a game like that to say, listen, guys, I want you aggressive. Mm. This is a massive game occasion, derby, and all that. But please yeah. use your head. Now, I don't know how much of that Arteta said over the, yeah, the, yeah. the weeks and months yeah, or even going into this one. Yeah.
But there is a part to play with the manager, Rob. There, there is, just is. Like everybody, be careful. If, if, we don't know if Arteta has said that, no. but Rob Holding has still gone out because that happens. Right. I, I've been in dressing rooms, Rob. I was the same as you. When you play playing midfield and tackles come in, and sometimes it's physicality. You get caught sometimes. You look after and think, right, you know. You, I, I, but I, know. I always, you know, I got sent off once in, in, in my career for a handball in, in a 20-year career, and it was something I was up proud because I always felt I could put the safety catch on. Yeah. It's a safety catch. Once well, you think I about the my team. Blood you boiling, think about the team. Yeah, and I think, right, just got to be careful. If I'm on a yellow, I used to be a little bit careful with challenge. I didn't used to tackle. I'd intercept because I know. And, and I just think that Rob Holding lost himself a little bit in the, yeah. in the, in the, yeah, in the emotion of the game. And, and almost, we'll probably look at it and go, like, what was I doing? Mm. Kind of look mm. back at it. But, I mean, listen, well, you know, it was, it was a big part of, of, of how the game played out. Obviously got the third goal in the second half, Spurs, and then it was done. Just, in the end, it, it, it was not a great spectacle. It was, was it? Because, as you say, it was yeah. disappointing that we didn't get the game we could have got. Two teams, level men, you know, going for it and see who came out on top. But it is Spurs who get the points. Right. So how um, are we looking? Credit to Antonio Conte and his group. Um, I, I, I read a little bit and, and was listening to a couple of interviews yesterday. It was quite interesting where he, he was saying he's much happier with the group now. And he, he, when he first came in, didn't quite, probably felt to give too much information. They weren't quite right where, where he was. He feels they, they were right now. And let's not forget, they, they missed Christian Romero at, at, at centre-back. Yeah. Davison Sanchez came in. And I've got to be, admit, I was a little bit concerned. I'm sure a few Spurs fans were that Sanchez come in and can be a bit of a hothead himself in, in, in those things, but was excellent, to be honest. Played particularly well. Played a lovely ball in for the third goal that came uh, into Sun in, in mm. the box. Mm. And was in control of himself. So maybe that's something Antonio Conte has worked out with mm. some of his players. But um, no, good tactical, thorough performance uh, by Spurs. A little bit streetwise when they needed to to get the advantages uh, of a few decisions. And they close the gap to one point. So let's think about the running. Two games left for both mm. teams. First Arsenal, because they are in control. They're one point yeah. ahead, of course. Yeah. They've got Newcastle away. Yeah. And then they've got Everton at home on the mm. last day of the season. Now... There's a bit of emergency right now in, at centre-back centre -back, in yeah. defenders for yeah. this football club. Roll holding, suspended, mm. uh, two yellows, one game suspension, yeah. I believe. And Gabriel holding the back of his leg. Yeah. You've got to worry about that. Now, Ben White would be the obvious guy to come in there. Um, not risk today, apparently. Not risk ready that. for that yeah. game. So it's, there's an there's a incredible amount of, of tension around Arsenal mm. about who's going to play in the back four. Yeah. Tommy Asu has played plenty of times as mm. centre-back in his career. Yeah. So he, he's... Obviously, it's not as preferred, I'm sure, but he could play in a, as a centre-back yeah. with Ben White if he's fit, assuming that Gabriel's not going to be fit. Cedric would play and Nuno Tavares would well, come in at left-back yeah. yeah. to go to play Newcastle away. So there is a back four there, but mm. it needs Ben White yeah. to be fit or, or Gabriel ready. to yeah. be fit. If not, then you're looking at Granit Xhaka. You, El Nani. You're looking at emergency, emergency. situation. Feels um, a bit like City, actually, and, and we'll talk about them later because they've got a similar situation. And, and I'm looking at Newcastle away and thinking Arsenal could go there and get a result if they can dominate possession, get control of the game. You know, those midfield players doing their job, you know, Jack and El Nani giving a bit of protection. Um, I think it's a game they can still still go and win. I do. And I, and I, I, think, I think they'll find a way yeah. to the top four, I do. And, and by the way, that's really, really tight. I mean, our good pal Lee Dixon yeah. said that he'd rather be in the Spurs camp, give mm. him momentum. They're one point behind. Yeah. They have got slightly easier games. They've got yeah, Burnley, Burnley at home and Norwich, and Norwich yeah, away, yeah, a bit of a which gimme, is, yeah. I mean, they, yeah. I guess at home against Burnley that can park the bus, it, mm. it could frustrate them. Yeah. Um, so super, super tight. I would just go with Arsenal, but yeah, I, it, it really, really could I'd go with Arsenal. Way. I just hope now that this Arsenal group can shake this off, can, can realise they are ahead, can, can use some of the disappointment, and they can still be playing Champions League football if they win two matches. Mm -hmm. Manager's job now, mate, isn't it? Yeah. Between yeah, now and Sunday. It's a test, isn't it? Uh, so, 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 it's so, a so test of him. Test. And these young players learn a bit of a painful lesson today. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I'm sure they forget about it immediately, mm. but longer term, Rob, in big games, in derbies, whatever it is, yeah. that, that composure, that well, mentality. Keep 11 players on the pitch, you've got to. Those big you've games. Got to. Let's move it on to the, the top two. Let's start at Villa Park. Um, Aston Villa 1, Liverpool 2. Liverpool got the job done. Sadio Mane again coming up with the goods uh, from a Luis Diaz cross to give Liverpool all three points. Um, but this was a test for Liverpool. Um, and as games have been recently, 
Uh, they've had to dig a little bit deep recently, yeah, Liverpool, to get to. results, haven't they? They have, and, and fair play to Villa. Mm. I mean, I, I, I think we expect, well, I certainly expected Villa to be fired up front foot. Yeah. They've been playing well the last four games, even though they lost heavily to Spurs at home, the game that we were at. Yeah, yeah. They were good mm. going yeah, forward. They their energy yeah. and the two front players they play, spinning in behind those Liverpool fullbacks many, many times. Uh, Coutinho started the game in the hole. It was, a, it was a tough game for Liverpool. They go behind in the game to Douglas Luiz, yeah, fourth minute, but, yeah. but found a way. And they found another gear in the second half, Rob, mm. that I know we know that they've <laughs> got, but it's still, yeah. you still watch the game and think, I remember, didn't we say, like, what, this is good. They don't, yes. like, they're not yeah. going to score yeah, it here. Might not be, yeah, it might not be their He makes day. a couple of substitutions. Yeah. Thiago they find comes that, on and he's 62, yeah. 65, they get the goal. Yeah, the, the, the difference that the, the guys in midfield, I mean, it was Naby Keita and Curtis Jones. Yeah. Fabinho, Rob, is a is an issue, isn't it? Yeah. Went yeah. off holding the back of his leg. Back of his leg. And we, we're hearing that he's not going to be available for the FA Cup final at the well, weekend. Week on Saturday. They're hoping he, he might be right for yeah. Champions League. So I'm not necessarily sure we're going to see him in the Premier League again either. But it's, it wasn't another example of Liverpool finding mm -hmm. a way, yeah. coming from behind yeah. at Villa Park. Yeah. You know, they do look... Well, and I remember saying this in 2019. Yeah. We have two teams, when you see them play, look like champions. Yeah. They do, and they're, and they're so close together. Um, so it was another good day for, for Jurgen Klopp as well, Rob. Just moments when he's on the sideline. He does everything. We kind of know now, don't we? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's the same but every he, week. But, he, but he, he, he berates, he, he, he hugs, he's getting the crowd, he gets him over. It's like he's part of, of, he's part of the game, he's part of the act, he's part of, of the occasion, and he makes himself part of the occasion. I'll tell you what I read, actually. It was an interesting one. I, I just want to chuck out, yeah? I read a really interesting article about Liverpool and Klopp. And one of the journalists came out with the line, and he said, it was interesting, you know, Liverpool's last season with the injuries, and he had some personal um, issues. I think his mother passed away through COVID. Mm. I said, nobody missed fans more than Jurgen Klopp last mm. season. Jurgen Klopp, part of Jurgen Klopp's match day routine involves the fans, before games, during games, yeah, after, after games. Yeah. And it, he, didn't, he wasn't able to do that. He wasn't the same sparky personality. Yes, they had injuries. But he, it's like he, 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 he inserts himself in the game either with what he does or what he acts to get Liverpool results. Mm. Somebody else, Rob, that, that I, I have to mention is Sadio Mane. I mean, talk about a, a big game player, mm. a player that's been reliable for Liverpool for many, many seasons. Mo Salah was rested in the game. Andrew Robinson was given the day off, Yeah, yeah. I guess, for the cup final. Mm. They played a ton of games recently, but they still find a way to get the job done. Sadio Mane has been, been rumoured about by Munich's interest. Yeah. You know, and whether they can, he can sign a new contract, Mo Salah, Rob, is it, a sense that, 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 that all of them aren't going to stay mm. and that at the end of this season that somebody's going to walk away. Yeah. I hope it's not Sadio Mane for Liverpool's sake because he's been so versatile now playing so as you, a central you, player. You'd let Salah go before? Well, I, like, I, like, I think, I think you, you try and keep both of them. Yeah. You know, they, they, they score but a ton one, of goals. If, one, if you're losing one, Have to be, it'd have to be Mane, wouldn't it? The goals are, are probably, solid. probably, yeah. But I know what you mean. You miss something for the drive, so and driven. Both of them yeah, are so central and, and, and so consistent. And since he's gone central, it's almost like he's brought another little yeah. element to his game, yeah. Do Diaz on, on that uh, left hand side, but uh, yeah, I know. And, and you're quite right, it's come up some big moments on big games, Sadio Mane, across all competitions uh, for Liverpool, becoming a bit of a key, key man. Mm. All right, make sure we move on. Let's quickly move on, move on to... to Wolves versus Manchester City. Again, mm. another game that I was looking at Danny, uh, our friend Danny Higginbottom on this one. And Danny kind of thought this would be Manchester City's hardest game in the running. Thought it was a possible slip. Was talking about Wolves possibly with a draw. Mm. Um, and maybe when the score was at 1-1, he thought so. But I, I, I didn't quite see it. And, and I much fancied City for their football, for the way they play, for, for what they've gone through, for the disappointment of Champions League. The news early in Haaland's in the building doesn't do any harm. Um, as we saw when Kevin De Bruyne scores, he's see a goal and, and, and does the Haaland celebration as if to welcome him in, but maybe to let him know he's the top man. Um, it was City at the Imperial Best again, wasn't it? Just too good, too much possession, too much movement. One of the players of, of the season, no doubt, in, in, in Kevin De Bruyne with a brilliant performance. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, in terms of player of the season, he, he's got to be right there, hasn't yeah. he? I think he's got to be right there. I mean, it's the numbers he's got now. He's top scorer, isn't he, for, for Man City? Is that 15 Premier League goals he's got right now? He's got a big number of goals. I think it's 
I think it's 15 that he's yeah, got. Yeah, I think it's 15, which is, yeah. Which it's the is, most he's ever got in a Premier League He just League looks in, in great oh, shape, yeah. you know, and he played a little higher in this game. He's definitely is a number 10. Yeah. A lot closer to the goal, which is, is pretty good. Rodri and Gundogan just sat in behind a little yeah. bit. You had Bernardo Silva playing up front. Foden to the left-hand side, Sterling to the right. Um, yeah, I mean, the, 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 the port injury is, is the... The one doubt that maybe City fans have got, Rob, given that Stones is out, Walker's out, yeah. and Diaz, mm. and now if Laporte's out with an injury that's going to keep him out for the, the last 10 days, I mean, they Fernand, still might Fernandinho be okay. Fernandinho as well. Fernandinho. They're saying he's got a bit of a knock as well. Is he? Yeah. yeah. I mean, some of the football, the, the is it the fifth goal, the Ryan Sterling goal, just yeah. made a note of that, the Edison ball out, and then it was one-touch football all the way through for that goal to be scored. But, of course, Kevin De Bruyne, Rob, is, is the headline maker in this game. The quality that he's got, the shot yeah. that he's had with his left foot to find the corner. Um, there's no question he's the best midfield player in the Premier League, yeah. is there? I mean, he's an absolute dream, Rob. It's almost like you shouldn't be able to have that much talent, that much ability, be built in a team that's you know, the platform for him to do what he does. And, and I was just wondering, Rob, with, with the shape, and you mentioned it, because they, they sort of morphed in. At one time, they were almost like 4 2 4 with. Um, De Bruyne and, and um, Bernardo or Silver, Foden, yeah. yeah, in that front But I just wonder if, if he sort of morphs to a 4 2 3 1, could Haaland be the one and three underneath him? Is that, is that a look to possible the future or an option for, for Pep going forward? It's got to be, isn't it? It's got to be. Mm. So, so you can... have two protectors then that might give him a little bit more security if need be mm. on certain days. Yeah, you know you know what? With, it, with this um, Haaland signing, I, I'm just, I feel like. The style is going to change. It's got to change. Mm. It'll play a little differently. I just think that's going to happen. So There's less onus yeah. on the midfield players to score the goals. And by the way, side note, probably maybe a different show. Do they even need Haaland? <laughs> they've got nine. They've got ninety odd, but, ninety-four goals yeah, with but, two games remaining. Well, let's look at that's it another not, way. Twenty-one years of age. You're getting for sixty million dollars. I know. I know. I know, I know, I know just in I know, terms of business. Oh, brilliant business. Buy him for a year and sell him if he, if he, no, no, if he doesn't no, fit. No, if he no. doesn't fit, you'll, you'll, make, you'll double your money. Could they have spent, could they have tried to in, improve their defensive structure so they can go ahead and, and win a Champions League? Yeah. When, Do you know when what the, I mean? The window will be open in the goals. summer. They're not, they're not done yet. <laughs> they're not done yet. You never know. But yeah, I mean, the problem yeah. is, I mean, do you see them slipping? Can you, can you see points drop now for them? Is there hope for Liverpool? I mean, Nine goals, nine goals shifted the goal in their goal, the difference, goal difference mate, over the last two games. They really, nine they goals. need to win one game, don't they? Really, goal difference. They need to win one game. Yeah, three points. If they finish, if they lose the the the, the, the other one, they're not going to lose by a lot. They're not going to no, you know, swing gonna a seven big. seven goal difference mm. from Liverpool. So they got to they got to mess up in two, two games. They got to mess up in two games. Mm. And I, and it's I don't know. I, I, you know, West Ham United, I think, is really tricky for yeah, them. I think that's the trickiest game they've, they, they've given the defenders and given yeah. the counter attacking the yeah. West Ham are happy with. They yeah. soak them up and, and they're trying to driven play. to get into Europe as well. You know, David Moyes ain't going to let that them not turn up. So mm. it'll be tough, but you'd have to say City, yeah, big big favourites now to, to get it done in, in the next two two games. Let's move it on, my friend, yeah. to um, big game at Ellen Road. Leeds nil, Chelsea three. Um, I was doing this game the weekend. Uh, did a lot of games, during the week. Did a lot of games. <laughs> um, every day I do a lot of games. <laughs> um, straight away, my first thing for Leeds is, Rob, they're hurting themselves. Two red cards in the last two games. Luke Aileen goes flying in at Arsenal. Don't know what he's doing. Straight red card. Don't, we're not seeing him again to the end of the season. Dan James, of all people, is not that kind of player. Goes into a silly... Foul on Kovacic, straight it. red card. Don't get it. Don't, not going to see until the end of the season. Conceding early goals in both the Arsenal game and the Chelsea goal game. Concede early goals, put themselves on the back foot, make it hard, hard enough anyway. There's, there's fundamentals that are going wrong with Leeds, Rob, that alarm bells should be ringing. And I, and I know Jesse's got his, his sayings and his famous quotes and all things. There's some certain basics that need addressing if they're going to give themselves a chance. Well, it goes back to our conversation about Arsenal. You know, mm. I, I, Jesse Marsh looks like a, a big motivator, right? He speaks well. Yeah. Obviously, he puts a lot of attention on the mental side of the game, tactically and all that. He's, he's, it's just, are they too fired up? Are they not? I don't know. I mean, but, but the two challenges, I mean, super aggressive, yeah, studs yeah, up, dangerous. Yeah. That was, I mean, Dan James, <laughs> have we ever seen him tackle like that before, really? So, I mean, talk about make it difficult for yourselves. I mean, 
This is this is still astonishing to me, Rob. And Leeds have been. I mean, they seem to be close to like 33, 34 points ages ago. Yeah, I remember yeah, we almost yeah. said we they said, should oh, be fine now. They now, should yeah. be good now. Normal win. And, and assuming that the, I think the last 10 years in the Premier League, the average has been 35 points to stay yes, in the league. Eight, yeah. And they're on 34. But of course, Burnley win three yeah. on a spin. Yeah, yeah, Everton yeah. start winning games yeah. and it's brought yeah. them into it. And that's really been a massive problem. Given Leeds' issues this season with the manager change, with Patrick mm. Bamford being out pretty yeah, much all yeah. season, Rob, those goals have been uh, missed. And now Injuries you have a situation where the last four or five weeks, teams are finding results. It's pulled them right in. And I don't know whether they've... And it'd be... I mean, what's it, 16 years, Rob, before? 16 years, they, they were out of it. The goal, the goal difference is, is, is horrendous at the moment. Yeah. You know, in terms Minus of that's 38. Worth, Man City, yeah, it's worth another point to, to the teams down there. You know, the swing's that big. It's... Um, they gotta hope they've got it on, they got to hope that Burnley don't win, an, win another game or don't get another point. They've got three games left, Burnley. Yeah, but, Burnley but, the but team they, they got Brighton at the weekend at home, Rob. That's a winnable game. It's must win as well, isn't it's it? It's a winnable game. It is. At well, home for Leeds against Brighton, you, you've got to feel think, that that's I, winnable. I mean, it's a game you've got to watch because you know yeah. what the fans are going to be like there. You know the atmosphere and the... Oh, I mean, we've seen the, the two teams, yeah. particularly Everton and, and Leeds, the, the amount of support mm. to try and help the team has been phenomenal. And we'll see it again at Ellen Road at the weekend. Yeah. But, I mean, Brighton are annoying. They're an annoying team. <laughs> yeah, they keep, keep the, the ball, ball off you. They work the ball. They get you nervous. Let's just turn it quickly to Chelsea. Yeah, to um, Chelsea yeah. Because uh, things are a bit turning around ahead of the FA Cup uh, final. Thomas Tuchel will have been pleased with, I think, his goal scorers, the performance. Um, Mason Mount, 11 Premier League goals for the season. Brilliant. He's proving really real great. talent for, for midfield. Yeah. Christian Pulisic is giving the manager... Headaches in terms of selection, and I know Tim was strong in terms of, in terms of Christian Pulisic has to maybe do more because he's American where right. he's come from. Right. Um, we 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 can we'll have a debate about that, but he must be in line for starting the the Got, I mean FA Cup final I, at the I, weekend. The, the production one. now is 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 starting to force the hand a little mm. bit. If you look at the... I haven't got them right in front of me right now. Yeah, the goal scorers. The day, Kai yeah. Havertz has got seven. Seven goals. Pulisic's got six. six. Werner's got Werner's less. Got four. Four. Werner's got four. And Pulisic has not played anywhere near the, the same yeah. amount of minutes. Yeah. Goals per minute, he, he's not doing bad. Yeah. You had the assist the other day for Lukaku, put it on his right foot yeah. where he's finished it off. I mean, I, you know, I'm sure he's loving playing in behind two strikers mm. as they, they've gone yeah, recently. The goal, That's yeah. Pulisic's favourite role. Mm. Um, I know he's always fighting to try and get in the favour of the yeah. last two managers. Um, I just think he deserves a run. You know, another run in the side. And, yeah. and people might yeah. say, well, he's had runs in the past. He hasn't been consistent. I've always asked for that as the final piece of Pulisic. Yeah, we know he's capable of doing yeah. great things, Moments. but it's got to be kind of consistently. But he, yeah, great goal. Great yeah. finish with his left foot. Played well again. So I, I'd be shocked if he's not starting the FA Cup yeah. final on Saturday. And I tell you else may well have played himself in the cup final. Big Rom, my <laughs> friend, has gone from sitting on the bench, not getting on against Everton when they lose away, to three goals in his last two Premier League games. A little bit of shortness, a little bit of, 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 of buzzing, and you feel a little bit of spark back with his teammates. And doing the thing that he was bought to do, Rob, and, and, and find the back of the net. Yeah. And a fit and focus, Romelu Lukaku, could, could, can give... Liverpool problem. I just, I just don't know where it's going with Lukaku. You know, the end of the season, the future at the club. Well, it, it, let's just say between now and then he scores a winner in the cup final, a couple of goals in the cup final that win it for them. He gets a couple more goals in, oh, the, then, in the then, thingy. And then let's have a summer. Yeah. Let, let's have a right. good pre-season. Yeah, and we go again. And, let, and let, let's yeah. start again. Let's wipe that the, the last year, the 12 well, What if he out. doesn't do that? Correct. In the right, remaining if he doesn't do that, they, they've got an issue on, do, do they sell him in what kind of number do they get to sell him and who who's the kind of replacement because it's not just getting rid of him it's saying okay wh where are you going well do you know where we chatted today briefly <laughs> should, we, should we bring that conversation in real quick we were just talking about harry kane yeah and like daniel levy's stopped him from going to city city got a new striker now in erling Haaland. um we thought about other clubs mm. and was where, it you said it or rebecca said like yeah. or you yeah. you think you said yeah. um what about chelsea. what about chelsea mm. And then we're like, well, yeah. And what about Lukaku? Well, actually, Spurs, counter-attack, Lukaku running in behind defenders where he's at his best, that kind of works too. As Conte's had him before. And, Conte's and, and had him before, done, loves done him before, won a championship goals. together, Serie yeah, A. Yeah, in. Yeah. Is that kind of an interesting swap deal there? That'll probably never happen. Fantasy football. It's a fantasy, fantasy football, football move, right yeah. there. Yeah. But uh, I get you. I mean, 
it would be it Lukaku, suit both Lukaku teams. and money, really, wouldn't it? You, yeah. Lukaku yeah. And money. Yeah. I mean, but then again, if you're Antonio Conte, and I know the relationship with Ronald Lukaku, yeah, yeah. you kind of like Kane, don't you? Yeah, and you don't you don't want to sell I, Harry Kane sure to, to a London rival and there's no. you know, a little bit of a history so between that, the two that, clubs. So that would be that the issue that Chelsea have. No, 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 he's yeah, staying yeah. here. So. Conte might just want to build Silly, build silly talk. No, the in Chelsea, listen, listen pub talk, and, and all right. we, we love all that stuff. All right. Let's talk a couple of other games, mate, just to wrap up um, this week in the Premier League. Watford nil, Everton nil. Um, it's another point, and, and, and Frank said it's certainly a point gain, not too lost, but you kind of look at Watford already gone. Yeah, it's an you opportunity know, team, you missed, isn't it? To, based to... on what Leeds would, uh, had done, you mm. just felt, could this have been a chance to put a real gap between yeah. them and, and Leeds and give them a little bit of breathing room, Rob? I'm just thinking, if, if they have a bad day somewhere else. Yeah, I mean... Everton fans won't thank me or us, but mm. it kind of keeps it tight. Yeah. It, ca- it keeps yeah. it fun yeah. for the for last... For the neutrals, it's, yeah. For the neutrals over the last yeah. kind of week and stuff. I think we're going to get a couple of things going down to the last day of the season, Rob, aren't we? I think yeah. at least, I, I, you know, top four and bottom, we'll see. There's games, midweek games again. All these rearranged games, by the way. You know, it's, yeah. in some ways, it's, it's kind of frustrating, Rob, isn't it? Because these are great games, yeah, that are midweek ones that we'd love to throw on a week. But they, yeah. they were the COVID uh, postponements that mm. have to be played midweek and make up the game so Everton got Brentford at the weekend um, it's a late game on Sunday yep. obviously games being played because of the FA Cup final but winnable at home with that fan base and what they've been doing for this football team you can see yeah. your way see of course Brentford. you can see it you've got, you've got to be able to see mm-hmm. haven't you the way they're going the momentum they've got the manager and the fan connection yeah. Yeah. those fans that we've said before yeah. won't let this team go down <laughs> yeah. that's a really important game for them <clears throat> it's a really big week it's a Sunday it's a yeah, big Sunday, Sunday yeah. Leeds home to Brighton yeah. Everton and Brentford both home games two teams that fans mm. desperate for their teams yeah. to stay in the division yeah. and what we know right now you've got to fancy Everton to get more out of their game than Leeds yeah. do you, maybe you, they yeah. both win it but yeah. incredibly important Sunday for those teams at the bottom of the table and just finally the final mm. game of this round Leicester 3 Norwich Nil, no, he's already down, and Dean Smith knows he's got work to do. I think the headline here was Jamie Vardy back in the team, two goals, how much different he's going to be. And I just think an interesting summer's coming up for Leicester, Rob, in terms of yeah. some decisions with players, some remodelling and how this club's going to go. It might need a, might need a little bit of work doing in, in the yeah. summer to, to come again. I think we are talking about a disappointing season yeah, for Leicester City. it has to be. And I know, you know, mid-table for Leicester. Yeah. They've a lot of injuries and all that. Mm. We hear all that, but but lots of teams do. That's disappointing. They're better just than mid table. They're, They're better than mid table. And Brennan Rogers, for what he's given with the mm. FA Cup victory and all yeah. that, he'll get. Of course, he'll get. Mm. Not, 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 not an argument, but it, like if he starts off badly next season, the questions will start to get yeah. a little bit will, yeah, more frequent. Be, yeah. You know, where's where are we going? Mm. Is this reached a natural conclusion? Which I don't think it is. I think he's an excellent coach, but it, maybe it needs a little shake up. Yeah. The, you know, the squad needs a little shake-up. Of course, got to get all your star players, defending players, fit again and out on the field. But Leicester, yeah, well done, Vardy. And Vardy's one yeah. of my, yeah. I've got to say, I, I love Vardy. I think he's one of my, my favourites over the last decade or so. Mm. The consistency that he shows, Rob, the quality Pro. and the his hunger. drive. Hunger and I know. drive. Yeah, it's fired up every incredible. single game. So, well done, Jamie Vardy. Yeah. And, yeah. But Leicester can do better. Absolutely can do better. Listen, mate, we're going to wrap it up there and what was a huge North London derby. Spurs get the win. that keeps their hopes of fourth place still alive. In a busy week, Kevin De Bruyne got four. It puts Manchester City in pole position to win four titles in the last five years. And at the bottom, Leeds lose again. I think we're going to need some words of wisdom from maybe Gandhi or Mother Teresa. <laughs> we'll be back on Sunday. That's May the 15th to review a busy week of fixtures and we'll review this season's FA Cup final. Liverpool face Chelsea at Wembley on Saturday. But for now, I'm Earl. He's Musty, together with the two Robbies. Thanks for watching and listening. Be safe, stay healthy. It's a good night from me. And it's a good night from him. Good Good night. night. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch highlights all season long and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend at 7 a.m. Eastern. And for even more content, head over to Peacock, where we've got live games, original series and a dedicated round-the-clock Premier League channel featuring studio shows, classic matches and much more.